How to rebuild a vintage steam toy, part one. Looking at how the engine is put together, then taking it apart and starting the rebuild. This is the engine just as I received it. Some parts are missing and some parts are broken. In this first couple of clips, I have the engine on my small turntable and I'm rotating it so that you can see it from all angles. Inside the firebox is a small spirit burner. Fairly rusty with no wicks, but that's an easy fix. The filling method's a bit unusual. Normally on a spirit burner you'd have a cap that you remove. But with this I think you just put the spirit in the top part of the tin and the spirit finds its way into the tank through the hole in the centre. This engine is in a very, very bad condition. Look at the flywheel, it's slightly out of alignment. I don't do much work on steam toys as a rule, but a gentleman came to see me and he wants me to fix this because it's a bit of a family heirloom. At first I said, well, it's not really worth it, it's going to cost more than it's worth, but he wasn't bothered. He said, it means a lot to him, so therefore I will repair it. If you're of a nervous disposition, I would look away now. Look at the state of the crankshaft bearing, it's a bit on the loose side. And to say it's badly worn is an understatement, it's terrible. I think you could say that this is a mechanical disaster area. It's never a good idea to use a steel crankshaft in a steel bearing, because it will wear rapidly especially if it's deprived of oil. The entire mounting assembly for the cylinder and the crankshaft is very loose as well, as it's only held to the firebox using two rivets, and the firebox is made from very thin material. So I've got my small green box at the ready, and all the parts are going into here. Quite a few parts are missing, and what is there is not particularly good, but I can rebuild this. And it's probably going to be quite interesting because I don't normally work on models of this type. Everything has to come off. This is a steam pipe, which has become unsoldered from the cylinder, so that's simple enough. Then the other valve at the other side is the whistle valve, which is incomplete. And now they're removed, it's looking better already. So what shall I do with this bent crankshaft? It appears to be simply threaded into the slip eccentric mechanism at the right-hand side. So by rotating the flywheel, it just unscrews. So what is a slip eccentric mechanism, I hear you ask, as the piston valve falls out of the cylinder? Well, slip eccentric is a simple way to reverse an engine. All you have to do is rotate the crankshaft in the direction that you want the engine to go and open the steam valve. Then if you want it to go backwards, you stop the engine, rotate the crankshaft in the opposite direction, open the steam valve again, and the engine goes in reverse. And here's a close-up shot of the slip eccentric mechanism. I'll show how it works in detail once I put it all back together. This is a curious thing. It's like a patch on the front of the firebox. And as you can see, the firebox is a little bit uneven. I'm assuming that at some time, this was a nameplate that had the manufacturer's name on it. But alas, it's been painted over a long, long time ago. Time now to carefully remove the cylinder, which is held in place with two brass bolts. The next job is to remove the bracket that holds the cylinder and the crankshaft. And as I said earlier, this bracket is mounted to the firebox area of the steam engine, which is made of very thin metal, so I'm taking great care not to distort it or deform it any more than it's already deformed. In this clip I'm using a small needle file to flatten off the top of the rivets on the outside of the bracket. When I get them flat enough, I'm going to drill them out with a small drill. This job takes a while and a bit of patience is definitely required here. I do not want to collide with the brass ring around the base of the boiler and mark it with a needle file, nor do I want the needle file to scratch the firebox. You have to be very careful with these very small engines. Structurally, they are quite fragile. Even though the steel bracket is very loose, under no circumstances must you do this. I'm making it look a lot worse than it is, by the way. What I need to do is further weaken the rivets before I can drill them out. So a bit more needle filing is in order, followed by using a centre drill in my excellent small Bosch electric drill. The initial idea is to weaken the rivet as much as possible. That's one down and one to go. So now using a screwdriver to very, very gently prise it off, I can clearly see what the problem is. Over the years, these two mounting holes in the firebox area have become enlarged and distorted and that coupled with the fact that the firebox area of this engine is a bit dinted and a bit uneven round the edges means that it needs a bit of major surgery. So I'm detaching the entire boiler and firebox assembly from the base. 
and this assembly is held to the base with four steel bolts or machine screws, or screws, or whatever you wish to call them. As I said earlier, I'm really not into steam toys, so I don't know what this engine is. It's either a Joseph Falk, or it could be a doll, or it could be any other kind of German engine from the same period. I don't know, maybe it's a Bing or a Marklin. If anyone watching this knows exactly what this engine is, please let me know. Then I can post the details on the next video. And the next video is more remedial work. This is the boiler that once upon a time was lacquered, and isn't any more, so all of this chip varnish needs removing. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.